Demon returns to King's Landing following a journey and his niece Rhaenyra greets him in the Red Keep's throne room while he is sitting on the Iron Throne. As a gift from his travels, he presents her with a necklace made of Valyrian steel and fastens it upon her. With Demon wielding the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister, he claims that they now both own a small piece of their heritage. That night, he leads the city watch of King's Landing in a ruthless show of force, gathering the city's criminals and administering brutal summary justice. Demon himself personally beheads an accused murderer with Dark Sister. In a small council meeting the next day, Demon is accosted by Otto for the mass violence he has inflicted, to which Demon defends his actions as necessary measures to ensure safety to the nobility arriving for Viserys's tournament. Otto then insinuates that he could perhaps show the same dedication he showed to the city watch towards his wife, leading Demon to insult both his own and Otto's late wife in retaliation. Before the argument can escalate further, Viserys diffuses the tension, while reminding Demon that another similar show of force will not be tolerated. While making love to his mistress Mysaria, Demon grows frustrated at the treatment he is being given by Viserys and the members of the small council. Mysaria soothes his irritation and reminds him that given his power and reputation, Viserys cannot easily replace him. During the Heirs tournament, Demon competes to represent House Targaryen, where he quickly proves his worth as a skilled fighter, even taking the chance to mock Otto further by defeating his son Gwain and earning his daughter Alicent's favor. However, he is defeated in a joust by Sir Criston of the Minor House Cole. Enraged, he demands his squire deliver Dark Sister to him to continue the battle in a duel. Though he initially gains the upper hand, Criston defeats Demon when he turns his back on him, leading Demon to storm off. When Queen Emma dies after in an attempt to save her child Balon, as well as the child's death shortly after, Demon is present during their funeral. Though he can plainly see Rhaenyra's anger towards Viserys, Demon urges her to support him nonetheless, believing he needs her more than ever. In a small council meeting later on, Demon watches the council unseen in the shadows, hearing Otto's insistence that he cannot be heir to the Iron Throne, lest he become a second Meg or the Cruel. Some time later he hosts offices of the city watch at a brothel, where he raises a toast to his late nephew Balon. Demon is later summoned by Viserys to the Great Hall, where his brother questions him on his naming of Balon as the heir for a day. Seeing his brother's anger, Demon insists that it was his own way of showing grief. When Viserys becomes furious at how he neglected to comfort him and Rhaenyra during their family's tragedy, Demon retaliates by stating that he had only ever tried to cast him away, such as sending him to the Vale and making him commander of the city watch, instead of being Hand of the King. Viserys grows angrier at the notion but Demon believes he should inherently become his Hand as his brother. Viserys says that Otto is a better Hand that he could ever be leading Demon to call his brother weak and insult the small council as leeches who plainly know it as well. Viserys then disinherits him as his heir and orders to return to the Vale. Demon tries to approach him but is stopped by the king's guard ready to defend Viserys, leading him to walk away in silent fury. As Viserys names Rhaenyra the new heir to the Iron Throne, Demon is instead at the dragon pit with Mysaria and his dragon Caraxes. Angered at Viserys denying him his right to the throne, he leaves King's Landing with his mistress atop the Bloodworm, making his way to Dragonstone. For half a year, Demon takes control of Dragonstone, with the City Watch as his personal army. It is also revealed that he has stolen a dragon egg from the Dragon Pit, intending to place it in the cradle of the child he has with Mysaria. When Otto is dispatched by Viserys to confront him on Dragonstone, along with several King's Guard and Otto's own guards, Demon refuses to back down and draws Dark Sister on the hand prompting both sides to unsheathe their weapons. As tensions rise, Caraxes appears from behind to defend his master, forcing Otto to command his guards to sheathe their swords. Demon is then personally confronted by Rhaenyra, who has defied her father's orders to stay and ridden Cyrax to Dragonstone. Knowing he is angry at being denied his place as Viserys' heir, she goads him into killing her in order to get what he desires. Unwilling to harm his niece, Demon relinquishes the dragon egg to her and walks back to the castle with Mysaria and his men. Inside, she chastises Demon for lying about their marriage and her supposed pregnancy, as well as relaying her fear that she will be punished for his actions since he is safe as the prince, but she is a common whore. Following Viserys's refusal to marry his daughter and his unwillingness to help with the threat of the Triarchy, Corlys Velaryon approaches Demon and invites him to Driftmark. 
Corley speaks of House Velaryon's ancient history and relations to Old Valyria like House Targaryen, as well as how they are both alike in the sense of them both being seen as lesser than their older brothers. Bored with his discussion about families, Demon questions him for the true reason he is at Driftmark. The former master of ships talks about the looming threat of the crabfeeder, how he has grown powerful thanks to aid from the free cities and how his house could be crippled when the shipping lanes of the Stepstones falls, speaking about Viserys's weakness. Demon makes it clear that only he is allowed to speak freely about the king, and him alone. Corlys says that if he were to help him with this conflict, he could prove his worth in the eyes of those still seeing him as less than his brother. Hearing Corlys state that their worth is not given but made, Demon agrees to aid his house with the crab feeder. The next three years come as a fruitless struggle for Demon, Corlys, and their men, as the crab feeder, Krahas Draha, and his triarchy forces continue to hold the stepstones in their control. Even Caraxes is not a weapon they could use to turn the conflict in their favor, as the numerous caves of the Stepstones allow Drahar and his men to avoid the dragonfire. News of their rising defeat spread far and wide, leading many to wonder if Viserys should send his own armies to win his brother's seemingly lost war. Even amongst their own forces, trust looms thin. Vaymond Velaryon, brother of Corlys, only sees Demon as the reason to why they are losing and openly questions why they should serve him, just as the prince arrives at the war council. As Demon stares quietly at his men, who all wonder who, for the newest plan, will offer themselves as bait at a strategic point on Bloodstone, a messenger from King's Landing appears. Demon is handed a letter by the young man, and he reads its contents. Viserys plans to send ten ships and two thousand men in order to help win the war. He only sees this as his brother bailing him out of his own fight and furiously attacks the messenger with his helmet, needing to be restrained by Vaymond, Joffrey Lonmouth, and Corlys's son Lainor. Using a small rowboat, Demon rows across from their position to Bloodstone, walks through the war-torn beach, fashions a crude white flag, and waves it in front of the caves. Draha emerges from his cave and sees him. Looking to the sky and seeing no dragon for an ambush, he sends his men out to investigate if they have truly surrendered. Demon draws Dark Sister and offers it to them on one knee. One soldier takes up the sword and inspects it, only for Demon to suddenly draw his dagger, cut down the man, and reclaim his weapon. He proceeds to kill all of the approaching soldiers and simultaneously dodges a volley of arrows from above, as he makes his way closer and closer to the edge of the caves, causing Drahar to send out more men. Though he gets close, Demon is hit by three arrows and forced to halt his charge. Still not seeing a dragon above, Drahar orders the rest of his men to surround Demon. Before he can be killed by the overwhelming number of soldiers, Lainor arrives and burns away the soldiers with his dragon sea smoke, saving Demon and further allowing the Velaryon forces to charge in and cut down the remaining soldiers. As sea smoke blasts away the cliffside arches and the last of the Triarchy soldiers are locked in battle, Demon spots Drahar fleeing into his cave and pursues him inside. Moments later, he emerges from the cave, holding the bisected corpse of the crabfeeder. After the war, Demon flies back to King's Landing on Caraxes, inadvertently rocking a ship Rhaenyra is on. Once he reaches the throne room, he haughtily makes his way to Viserys, holding Drahar's hammer and wearing a crown. He offers the hammer of his foe to be added to the Iron Throne. Viserys sees his crown and asks if he styles himself king as well, to which Demon responds that he was named, King of the Narrow Sea, following their victory against the Triarchy. Nonetheless, he announces that there is only one true king, his brother. Demon offers the crown on one knee. Viserys takes it and commands him to rise, before hugging his younger brother, welcoming him back. At a celebration in honor of his return, Demon playfully argues with Viserys over who was the favorite of their mother, to which Viserys states it has always been Demon for his rebellious attitude and skill as a warrior. Rhaenyra approaches them and congratulates her uncle on his victory while Alicent asks if Demon would like a tour to see new tapestries, causing Viserys and Demon to laugh uproariously at the silly notion. At the end of the celebration, Demon meets with Rhaenyra, who asks him the real reason he has returned. Demon answers that he had returned for the comforts of home, though she remains unsure if he truly finds comfort in King's Landing. Their conversation's attention turns to Rhaenyra's growing ire at her father for trying to force her into marriage. In High Valyrian, they talk about marriage being nothing but a political arrangement, though Rhaenyra notes it is also a death sentence for women, revealing her worry that she will end up like her mother. 
Demon states Emma's death was simply a tragedy, and in a tragic world, Rhaenyra cannot allow fear to control her life. This article is a stub. An article too short to provide more than rudimentary information about a subject. You can help the Game of Thrones wiki by expanding it.